show me our way to victory, says the slightly masculine female Inquisitor here. Gonna be Teutonic Knight playing as the Inquisitor. Finally, a little bit of IG gameplay. Feels like it's been quite some time since we've seen it, and I love this classic early Sentinel. There's always a debate about whether you go for your Guardsman first, then your Sentinel after, or if you go for your Sentinel first, then your Guardsman after. I like the Sentinel first. I think there is no objectively correct answer. It depends on the map. You probably want Sentinel first on smaller maps because... The, okay, so let's talk about the advantage of the Sentinel first. You can inflict bleed to your opponent sooner because your Sentinel will engage with enemy forces sooner. However, you have much reduced capping power capabilities because your second capping squad other than your hero is coming out a lot later. So on a big map like this, I feel like getting the Guardsman first might be worth it. Because it's going to be a long time on a big map before your Sentinel meets the enemy and can bleed them. Now it was unlucky here for Teutonic Knight that he met the Plague Champion, who could repulse him so easily. Imagine instead, had he met the Heretics, it would be free bleed for Teutonic Knight to inflict on his opponent. And in that sense, the Sentinel first also depends on your opponent and the build that they are going to be using versus melee squads, or really anything that can't 1v1 a sentinel easily, like default shooter boys or termagants, but not like CS7 tactical marines, a sentinel first is going to be quite powerful. Either way, he's going to be facing up against Arthur Cloud today. He's going to be playing his Plague Champion. And Heretic's putting in a little bit of work there. Did actually manage to get into melee with the Guardsman. But, you know, default Heretic's cheapest unit in the game. They're not really going to achieve a whole lot fighting free squads of the Imperial Guard all on their own. Alpha's going to be going for double CSM, double Heretics. Actually not that rare of a build against Chaos, but one that I've not seen in a while nonetheless. Typically you can expect one grenade launcher at the very least, one grenade launcher and then one default one running around just capping and worshipping for the heals. Could be effective. You might even see some heavy weapon team play to try and shut down the ranged forces here since there's no Havocs to do counter suppression and there's certainly, so far, no Raptors. But yeah, Arthur could follow up with Raptors if he sees a heavy weapons team and then Teutonic Knight could go for a Kaddish and Devils to counter those Raptors and also to old reliable any grenade launchers because grenade launchers will do okay against a heavy weapons team. And it might be that that's what we see. This is going to be a sloppy Saturdays game of course so I don't know if these players will go for the super heavy tier ones. Not sure if that's going to be their thing or not. We'll find out. So a little bit sloppy here from Teutonic. He really should be repairing his Sentinel this entire engagement. I, I don't know why he's not. Perhaps... Okay, that was really weird. I don't know what happened there. I'm not sure what he's looking at. There's nothing else even happening elsewhere. Very strange. Very strange indeed. These CSM really need to make a choice. I mean, right now there's absolutely no reason for these CSM to be in overextending quite dramatically, potentially going to get killed in retreat. No, they... Has Hammer of the Witches been used? Okay, this is... This is very sloppy. <laughs> right there, quite clearly, this Garzmas God could have been wiped by the PC and the CSM. Either of them shooting at the Garzmas God would have wiped them out. And we're going to see some fast grenade launchers... Um, doing that even before he's seen the heavy weapons team, so that's quite something. Wow, and he goes for the AC on the grenade launcher ticks as well. That's quite some commitment. I don't like that from Arthur. I think that's a massive amount of commitment that's not really necessary yet. I would probably have waited and gone for the... Gone for the Raptors first to counter the heavy weapons team. That said, Raptors... Always a little bit questionable to go jump units against the Inquisitor. She has that Holy Brazier in Tier 1, especially for the Heavy Infantry jump squads. Oh, look at Nice Guy Arthur saying he cannot hack the scent man uh, management too much micro. Arthur, there was fucking nothing going on with it to be microing in that engagement. <laughs> there was absolutely nothing. The Inquisitor was already in melee and the two Guardsmen were sat in green cover, not moving. Um, that was a simple click your squad. You could have manually clicked that repair onto the Sentinel, there would be no drama. I do recommend using hotkeys though. But I mean, let's see what Teutonic Knight can do. He's going, he's going for the Holy Brazier now. 
which I don't know about because Arthur doesn't really have that much melee anyway. He doesn't need to melee Teutonic Knight's forces. And if the Inquisitor is just running out ahead into a big range blob of PC, Double Chaos Space Marines, Grenade Launcher Heretics, she's just going to get shot down so easily. She's not that durable of a hero. Only 720 HP here. Now, he could get the Rosarius as well to give her an effective 500 bonus HP, but I really don't think that would be very cost effective. I think he'd have been better off waiting for tier 2 and getting the Inferno pistol. We'll see. Right now I just feel like, yeah, Teutonic's build was very light, so I like the fact that he's going for Kadashin Devils, that's pretty good. Now Daffa's kind of walking everything right into the Arc of Fire of Suppression, but for now... Okay, it does eventually suppress all the CSM. Could do with tying up the Heretics in melee, they're like the primary range threat now because they ignore the cover. And they're doing splash as well. Heavy weapons seem not setting up right now. Needs to back off. Now the good thing for Teutonic there was there was no focus fire onto the Inquisitor in that entire engagement. Alpha was completely focusing on dealing with the heavy weapons team. So the Inquisitor actually put in tremendous amounts of work there with the Holy Brazier. Havoc Squad is going to be the next choice for Arthur, so hilariously we do actually have 5 unit tier 1s from both players. Obviously Teutonic Knight here is lacking his Sentinel because he somehow forgot to repair it. I don't know, maybe he's not a regular IG player? I am a bit baffled as to how that even happened though, even if you weren't a regular IG player, because there was literally nothing going on! Literally nothing happening. So we got a little bit of a lull in the action here, and the players are just going to be capping up the map for the most part. Well, Arthur's not really doing a whole lot of anything. Just finished healing up his forces, going to be moving them out now into position. It looks like Teutonic Knight will have a really big tech lead. What I'm thinking right now, I don't know if Teutonic Knight's thinking it or not. Banewolf could be extremely effective here. Arthur Cloud has a lot of power but not a lot of requisition, and it's going to hold him back for a very long period of time here. This presents a beautiful window of opportunity here for Teutonic Knight. Oh look, it's Arthur. Once again, top it, forgetting to go offline while doing casts. It's brilliant. <laughs> it pre presents a beautiful window of opportunity here for Teutonic Knight to get to tier 2, call in a Bane Wolf, rush the gen farm, and get a nice bash going off. But he really needs to be defending his power farm as well, so it's interesting. He has the Kadashans here, and, you know, he hasn't really seen much threat. So he should really expect that Arthur's coming to gem bash him. And it's, <laughs> it's quite a funny scenario, actually. They're just going to pass one another and completely avoid a serious fight and bash one another's gen farms. Now, this is really bad positioning here for the Aspiring Champion Heretics. They need to get out. They obviously can't take all this on. Has uh, Arthur forgot about them? He must have. What is he doing? Arthur! Back in hell, mate. I mean... Like, you don't need to watch this. There's there's nothing... The, the generators can't fight back, guys. The generators can't fight back. You don't need to watch your troops bashing the generators when you've got another squad over here. So... He's going to lose an Aspiring Champion Heretic, and that actually makes the game relatively even. It's now 4 on 4, and by losing the Generators and killing the Generators here, Teutonic Knight does have the red available to call in a Banewolf, which he didn't actually before all this started happening, so... That would be a great choice. I don't think he's going to do it, though, because I'm pretty sure he could already be doing it. Maybe. Maybe he doesn't have the power. No, actually, he doesn't have the power. Shit. That's a problem. I think a Banewolf... Okay. He bought Plasma Guns. He would have had the power. I think a Bane Wolf is 75 power. He just bought plasma guns for both of his squads. That's an extra 25 power for each of them. So that would have given him, yeah, an extra 50 power. He would have had the resources for a Bane Wolf. So that would have been really effective here for Teutonic Knight. And he's going for the Rosarius now as well in tier 2. I just, I don't know. I don't like this play. I don't like this play. I really feel like Havoc should suppress faster once again. They're just the worst setup team right now. 
They always used to suppress literally instantly, but did you see how long it just took them to suppress the Guardsmen? That was ages. And given that they already do the lowest damage of all the setup teams, in their heavy bolter suppression anti-infantry format that is, but they also have the, the shitty thing where when they're upgrading to a last cannon, they become immobilized. So, two pretty big advantages, and basically the only... Sorry, two pretty big disadvantages. And the only advantage is the fact that they can be buffed by worship. Hmm. I don't know. Don't like them. Still probably worth it versus IG, mind you. Or you could go Raptors and Noise Marines. But yeah, probably kind of scary to do that against an Inquisitor. Either way, Alpha is going to have to retreat out of this situation. Looks like the GL Ticks here are performing pretty well. Plasma Gun, Guardsmen not really effective against these guys. They are light infantry. Bit of a swing and a miss there from the Kadoshan Devils. And it's going to be a Chaos Dreadnought coming out for Alpha Cloud. Now there is of course a Heavy Weapons team already on the field. They'll be able to upgrade to a Last Cannon quite easily, especially looking at the requisition situation for 2 Tonic Knight. He's got a lot of wreck. So you could get a Last Cannon and replace the Heavy Weapons team and get another Heavy Bolter one as well if you wanted. Stormtroopers would be a kind of no-brainer choice right now. Especially if he sees the Dreadnought, he might go for a Melter Stormtrooper. Melter Stormtrooper plus the last cannon would be some beautiful commitment to kill that Dreadnought. It should be quite easy to take it out. Again, remember, there's no jump squads. If there were jump squads, this ranged AV would be a lot less effective. Wow, he has dropped three gens down this side of the map. Why did he do that? That's... That's a huge commitment. I, I mean, look, I know he's got a shitload of wreck, but... It seems very unlikely you'd be able to protect this. I'm not sure it's really worth it. The Rick would probably be better spent going for some Stormtroopers. Or more Heavy Weapons teams. Strange. Either way, the Dreadnought is going to be disengaging, coming into the mid for a bit of an army versus army fight here. And I say a bit, because it's not really a proper one, is it? The secondary squad of Garsmen slow to respond. Of course, there's no AV right now, so this is a pretty awkward situation. Inquisitor has to be careful. This is a lot of focus fire, and there is damage over time coming in from the Plague Champion. Dreadnought should be able to get into position here and kill the Inquisitor with a melee attack on retreat. I don't know if Arthur is aware. No, he's not. He's not thinking about that. No, that would require too much foresight. He's just going to walk to the left because he's completely forgotten that there are triple gens here. Now, maybe not. Maybe he actually wants to cap the gens here. Let's see. So he's only replaced two of his gens here. He's very slow to react, but he probably wants to cap these gens. Teutonic Knight right now should be nerding this. But he's focused right now on getting these Melter Stormtroopers into a position to try and take down the Chaos Dreadnought. Now, of course, a single squad of Melter Stormtroopers can be countered quite easily by... Just running into melee with it, but okay. Arthur makes an absolutely horrendous decision there. Starts getting leveled in the side by an auto cannon, and he tries to then melee the auto cannon. But of course, the melters also do AV. Uh, yeah, terrible play. He was on the arc of fire of the auto cannon as well, so just on the edge of the arc of fire, so he probably would have got out. Um, but then again, it, it could have easily rotated and probably killed him. Just a, a massive overextension. I don't really understand where the rest of the army went. Yeah, like, the rest of the army haven't retreated. Why were they not up there supporting the Dreadnought? I don't understand. And indeed, Arthur is going to capture this point, but I don't know how long it's going to stay his. He's going to node it, but it's not quite as effective as the node would have been from Teutonic Knight earlier, because Stormtroopers are here, and they actually take down nodes and generators extremely quickly. They also ignore cover with their melter guns. So, cover not proving super effective there. Also, cannon right now is blasting through those Havocs. The shield here proving quite useful. I'm not sure why the Stormtroopers are running up so close, but okay. Garsman probably want to start deploying some cover rather than standing out in the open. The damage over time here is going to be pretty scary onto the heavy weapons team. Mm, looks like that was a really nicely timed reload there for Teutonic Knight. 
And the CSM now going to be running into melee. One of them is slain by the plasma gun. Two of them are slain by the plasma guns. But now both the Garzma squads are tied up in melee, and that is not a situation they want to be in. Against really anything, but especially against CSM. There was a threat of Hammer of the Witches in retreat there, but it was just off from killing anyway. It does 100 damage on retreat, or in general, so wouldn't quite have killed that CSM model. But Teutonic Knight's going to be going into tier 3. And Alpha Cloud, for some reason, has Blood Letters. I'm going to be honest, I'd probably get Raptors. No, it's, it's fine, I guess. You could go Blood Letters and Mac of Corn. And just overwhelm this, this army with melee. Raptors are nice because of the suppression on landing, whereas Blood Letters can be kited quite easily, but then again, there's already double plasma guns, right? So they're not going to be that effective against Blood Letters. They would do a lot of damage to Raptors, to be fair. But the heavy melee on the Raptors is nice as well. If I mean, typically that's nice against Chimeras. But... Well, the threat right now is going to be a Lehman Russ, isn't it? Of course, Arthur doesn't know that Teutonic Knight is tier 3, but he should damn well expect it. He knows that he's basically only seen the Stormtrooper as far as tier 2 purchases are concerned. And the Inquisitor can call in Stormtroopers for even cheaper than other units, uh, other heroes. So, yeah, Teutonic Knight's had a very cheap tier 2. Just Stormtroopers made cheaper by the Global versus a Dreadnought and a Bloodletter squad for Arthur, and now another Heretic squad, so come on. Arthur should definitely know he's going to be facing something in tier 3 soon. Good amount of AoE damage coming out here, splash damage from the Auto Cannon, and then a Hell Fury strike from the Inquisitor's Global Bar. Gonna make these guys have to run away. No Commissars on the Guardsmen. The Commissar isn't just a no-brainer upgrade because the additional models that it adds do contribute a lot of extra upkeep. So it can actually hurt your economy if your Guardsmen aren't bleeding that much in the first place. Oh, uh, Teutonic Knight just lost a, a squad of Kadashans somewhere. Presume oh no, Kadashans, sorry, um, Melted Stormtroopers got ripped up by Bloodletters. And right now, this CSM squad's looking pretty dangerous. Can she get another kill? No, apparently not. So default heretics getting shot by an auto cannon never goes too well. They will get into melee with a heavy weapons team, which needs to get out of there, especially with Bloodletters teleporting in. And um, Bloodletters should make pretty easy work of the Inquisitor here. We just need to find an edge. She's not really powerful enough to take them on. I am of you. Yeah, certainly not with the supporting fire of a plague champion. But she gets out alive. Lehman Russ is going to be the choice for Teutonic Knight. They'll be very effective. There's no AV yet for Alpha Cloud. He's probably going to have to get... Oh, please don't get more heretics. He's clearly got the heretics on Overwatch. This will not go well. If he gets another heretic squad, he's going to be in big trouble. An execution and Lehman Russ is going to rip all these infantry threats to pieces. He obviously needs to get some, some Havocs out or some Plague Marines. But he doesn't see the Lehman Rush yet, so he should probably just be saving up right now for Tier 3. Look at Alpha Cloud's power. Nearly 500 power for him right now. It's because he owns all these generators right here that Teutonic Knight built. Why Teutonic Knight built three gens over here, I'm not sure. This is a nice play from Alpha, actually. Denying him the power with a Noxious Cloud here. It's funny because Alpha doesn't need the power, but Teutonic Knight really does need the power. Oh, but Alpha didn't move the cloud. No, that should have been a wipe on the squad for sure. These guys don't have the Commissar, so they're very squishy. I think that would have been a wipe. Didn't move the cloud, though. I don't know why he didn't move the cloud. Again, there was barely anything going on. I mean, he, he was just doing an order down here. Just a move down here. If they encounter anything, they'll beat them. Don't worry about it. Move your cloud over here. Like, you knew there was double guardsmen here, so what was down here that required you to so fervently observe it? You know? 
And the decision for Arthur to not destroy these gems but to cap them is probably going to bite him in the ass right now as Teutonic Knight's going to be able to take them back. Teutonic Knight for some reason is going for Kadashian Devils in tier 3 which seems very odd to me. Just get Kasakin. Obviously Kadashian Devils have the, the anti-melee shotgun blast but it doesn't matter. Just, you know, that only gives you a little bit more time to output range DPS into the units. Just get Kasakin, they do more DPS. And then every time Kasakin kill a squad, it's going to inspire all your nearby guardsmen to do more damage as well. So focus by the heretics of the Kasakin, get some inspiration buffs, and then just kill everything. But either way, he's going to have Kadashans coming out. Of course, they are default Kadashans, so they're under level 1. They're not that tanky. Going to be quite vulnerable to any AoE that Arthur can field. For now, it's going to be a Havoc Squad with a last cannon upgrade on the way. Makes sense. It's all he's really can do to counter the Lumen Rust. Probably wants to follow that up with some Plague Marines. Being stuck in Tier 2 is definitely going to be painful, though, for Arthur Cloud. As mentioned earlier, an Executioner Lumen Rust with its Plasma Cannon thing. I don't know what it's called. Is it? Is it just a Plasma Cannon? I guess it's called an Executioner Cannon, right? It's basically like a Rapid Fire Plasma Cannon. Shorter range than most of the other cannons in the game, but man does it rip infantry to pieces because it does splash damage. And it's splash damage that has a bonus against heavy and super heavy infantry too, so even the CSM will be pretty much as vulnerable as the heretics. They're all going to melt to it. And Lehman Rust are the most durable tanks in the game as well, so they can quite literally tank a bunch of last cannon shots and with the executioner they can just drive up and kill the the front model very fast but let's see for now we've just got a default demon rust which is durable but doesn't really have much damage output very slow rate of fire in its cannon not a lot of splash damage heretics on the side there look like they're getting wrecked by the combination of Kadashans and Garzman look that is getting into combat in the middle here though is pretty good should be able to tie up the heavy weapons team after doing a very big push through the center with his infantry however the Havocs are walking through a health hero which has made them lose quite a bit of HP Lima Russ honestly probably could have just traded with them and now shot it looks like the Havoc doesn't actually have line of sight right now onto the Lima Russ you can see how little damage the last cannon does per hit but it does snare the Lehman, which is a little bit spooky, I suppose. Level 2 already for the Lehman. Blood that is are getting killed by the Inquisitor this time. She's now level 5. She's got a lot more durability. You've got to remember her level ups give her more energy, which fuels her Rosarius. But the Blood that is weakened as well, and no supporting fire from the Plague Champion here. The Inquisitor is going to banish those demons. We are ready to proceed, sir. Oh, wow. Noxious Cloud must have been activated over here, killed the Garsmen and the Kadashan Devils after they killed... No, they didn't even kill the Heretics, the Heretics fled. Oh no, they did kill them. It's another Heretic squad. Ha! Of course. I don't know why Alpha's getting so many Heretic squads, if I'm being honest with you. I probably would not bother with that. Probably just be saving up for a Plague Marine squad. He probably wants to... have another capping unit, but... I don't think it's worth it right now, I think... I think he could send the um, these heretics off quite quite easily to go do the capping. I do like this play though with the shrine. So he's getting on-field reinforcements and he's got the healing. So we've got some Ogrins coming out here for Teutonic Knight. Probably going to see them made into Bulgrins, which would make sense. Bulgrins don't have the speed of Ogrins and they don't have the... Well, they don't have any damage on the move in ranged. Um, but they are just generally way more durable, a little bit more damage in melee, so... Very good line breakers, very good tanks. Be able to tank CSM shots for days. As for now, just default Ogrins are ripping this Havoc to pieces. The high fire on the move from the Ripper Guns will be quite useful here. Kills two of the Havoc models, Inquisitor is also in melee, and also slays a couple of Chaos Space Marines herself. Arthur's economy is absolutely a shambles right now. Too much bleed for him. Way too much bleed. I didn't realise how low the VPs were. 41 VPs only for Teutonic Knight. 
to 300 of Arthur. That's probably why Arthur was trying to uh, bunker down with shrines and such to kind of ride out the end of the game. Probably needs to be sending the heretics down through here. Not here, because you don't want to give him line of sight of your heretics via the point, but across here and onto the point here, the natural, to decap it. Try and stall out the VPs, because right now it's going to be very difficult for Arthur to win this game. Even though he has that big VP lead, his army is, quite frankly, abysmal compared to Teutonic Knights. Probably wants to get Purgatus on the Inquisitor next, would make sense. I'm just going to help him dominate the army versus army fights even more than he already is. Which can't hurt, can it? There you go, finally we see the Executioner Cannon on the Lehman Russ as well. Yeah, at this point I'm not sure how Arthur's going to be able to push against this, it's practically impossible. He needs Mark of Zinch on the Cursed Space Marines to deal with the Ogrins. I don't know, he just needs, he needs a lot. A lot that he cannot afford right now. Going to be getting another Havoc. I don't know what the plan is with them. He does need more AV, but he's probably just going to be getting a Heavy Bolter one to try and control the Ogrins. But the problem is, you can suppress them, but you don't really do any damage. Because it's all just a bunch of piercing onto Super Heavy Infantry, which is not ideal. can't remember what the the modifier is for piercing against super heavy infantry is it like only 20% damage can't remember it's not a lot you, it's very very low amounts of damage from piercing onto super heavy infantry two tiny knights going for a chimera interesting yeah I mean I guess it makes sense he could also have dropped a bunker but he kind of has the red for a nuke right he's very close so it probably makes sense to save the red for that. It's going to be a noxious cloud from Arthur. Of course, he can't drop a nuke even though he's got the red for it because he's stuck in tier 2. And the Havoc right now is not focusing on the Ogrins, which is a big mistake. And is that going to be a rocket run? Oh, indeed it is. Some friendly fire on the Ogrins there, but it doesn't matter. That is going to be GG. Arthur's army absolutely wrecked in this instance. A lot of pew pew, Ogrin's finishing off a few of the dirty heretics and the Rus can just chase them into base. Pretty beautiful rocket run right there. And a not so beautiful Soppy Saturdays. But I guess at least we got to see some Inquisitor. Shame we didn't see any Bane Wolf. It's been many many months since we've seen any Bane Wolves honestly. That would have been a perfect opportunity in this game to get one, but what can you... What can you expect? It's the Sloppy Saturdays, guys. You can't really expect much from your Sloppy Saturdays, but there you go. That is Teutonic Knight beating Arthur Cloud. Throws in the towel. Thank you for tuning in, folks. Topid signing out.